Howdy all, it's the Game Colonel here again. You are looking at the Dolphin, the newest ship to be released uh, in the Commander's Beta Edition 2.3. We're going to go pimp this ride out. Right? We're going to take this ship, I'm going to add a few things to it, boost it up, and we've got this all set up and done and, and, and pretty well balanced uh, for uh, the, the job of its primary role is to carry passengers and a little bit of cargo and then we're going to take it over to Felicity Farseer and see how much distance we can put on to the frame shift drive. So okay first to start off what is this ship about? Looking here at the specs top speed not bad for a stock ship at 258 at your boost especially going to 361 okay that's a great starting location. Mass not too heavy a ship but it's got some heft to it Next, take a look at down here, the uh, jump range. You look at the max, this is again, uh, as it sits, unladen at 10.67. That's a pretty good start uh, uh, distance for a ship of this type. It takes a, anywhere from a small landing pad on up. So it's not a giant ship, um, like when you were looking at your Beluga or the Orca but it, uh, it is a, a very versatile ship and so what we're going to try to do is max this out so let's look at the hard points here first hard points if you're doing the, the role of this ship are pretty much useless All right, this is not an offensive weapon uh, uh, you're not going to, excuse me, the ship is not offensive and this is not a defensive weapon your best bet is to cut and run on this so what we're going to do is we are going to sell this. Let's get it out of there. Goodbye, and this will save us a little bit of power on the back end when we start doing some adjusting to the ship. Okay, we are empty now with our hard points. Okay, utility mounts already empty. Because I want this purely defensive and to be able to cut and run, um, I'm going to put a few things in here okay so let's browse the shop definitely I want a chaff launcher okay there's no other options there just gotta buy the one that they have and go ahead and select it okay that's in place this is the second one on top now if you look at this you do the browse here this is what it offers you kill warrant scanner Again, for this type of ship, useless. Manifest scanner, useless. Shield boosters, possibly. Um, and then the wake scanner, also useless. So we're, for my purpose on the ship, uh, and the way I manage uh, getting away from a fight on a ship that's not designed to that, I drop out of my uh, boosting speed and then immediately re-engage the FSD after uh, the minimal cooldown period, and I get away 99% of the time. Okay, so it doesn't give me a lot of options. I would like a missile defense system onto this or some flares, but it doesn't give me the option. So I'm going to put one more chaff launcher on this. Uh, most likely, I won't need it. Uh, if you're firing off that much chaff, uh, you haven't done something right. But we're going to go ahead and put this down here. It's a, not too bad of an expense. It does add to our power usage. As you can see, we're up a little bit but we're going to adjust that in a little bit. Okay, core internal. What do we have here? Lightweight alloys, keeping that the same. Power plant. Now, a lot of folks are always going to tell you, go for the max, the one that you can, which would be the 4A for that. But what I'm telling you is there's not a lot of power requirements you're going to need for this ship. So to be able to save a little bit of weight and increase our boost range, I'm going to drop it down to a 3A alpha. So for, for example, right now, 4A, I'm sitting at a max 15.60 megawatts. All right, I drop it down to a 3 alpha. I go up to 12. It pushes my jump range, if you see right down there, to 11.6. So 3 alpha is what I'm going to go with here. It's a 60% for heat efficiency and also power capacity. So we're going to go ahead and install this. And we are installed. Now we've got the power plant. Thrusters. 
again it's about getting away it's about moving around so here's what I like to do I like to definitely max these out so if I look at 5 alpha it does consume a bit of my power but I think I'm still good in the long run we may have to come back and revisit this but I'm gonna go with this because of my my mass readings on this are, are good uh, and um, the power draw it does draw a little bit more power as we saw below but I think this is manageable at this time okay so we're gonna go with the 5 alpha we go ahead and buy this uh, do, 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 sell old module and we're good okay here we go with a frame shift drive definitely something that you want to max out on this and we will also utilize that uh, with Felicity to to boost that up there so when I install the 4 alpha it's going to give me a 23.82 light year range empty not bad and as you see there's not a big difference between uh, my minimum jump range and my maximum jump range it's, it's pretty good just over uh, one so let's go with that and install okay and if I, also you look at this disregard the prices and the credits you see here this is for the beta those are gonna change when it's released uh, uh, to the general public the items and options probably won't change but the prices definitely will to include the price on the ship and that's why I didn't mention that one yet so let's go to that exchange good okay life support I'm gonna keep the same I usually don't mess around with that uh, I don't usually find myself in a problem with that okay and actually if I wanted to I could dial this down here I'm at a 4e oh, it doesn't give me that option I'm on the lowest type that I can so disregard I'm keeping that there okay power distributor this is allowing you to shift your power effectively uh, and quickly between each of the items so I definitely want to max this one out for a 3 alpha we're still good with our power okay let's change it my sensor suite I'm probably gonna keep the same let's take a look at what they offer it's pretty much okay well wow. big increase in power draw but we're still good typical emission range not bad but um, I'm going to keep this at 3 echo for now okay and I'm also going to keep the fuel tank which you're going to see probably I haven't looked at this yet it's not going to get any bigger so um, I'm at 4 Charlie yeah we're pretty much maxed out right there it's the one I installed at 16 so we're good to go there um, good 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 Let's go back okay uh, optional internal right now I'm going to keep these as they set so as you see it comes with a five echo uh, economy economy class passenger cabin uh, it's got a cargo rack capacity of eight for the next one now if you wanted to uh, uh, focus mostly on passengers I would just do this change here we're not going to do any missions but if we go to passenger cabin and I would probably throw a business class passenger um, in there to give you the option of going ahead to doing that we're not going to do it this time I'm going to keep it uh, the same as it sits let's go back one more shield generator I'm going to keep that the same and actually let's see if we can save a little bit of weight with this ah shield generator should be down here okay we are sitting at 4 echo and that's my mass boot time one second and the power drop 1.32 at 4e what if I went with 3a see a lot more power draw on that one and increased weight okay I don't want to sacrifice too much strength but I don't also want to add a lot of weight okay I think we could uh, I think we can maybe manage this here let's give it a shot with three alpha it gives me another boost to my maximum jump at 24.32 uh, increases strength of course but it again power draw and hull mass and that's what makes the difference we're gonna shoot with this 
see what we can come up with. Keep that the same. Cargo racks, I have an empty, I have a basic discovery scanner. Let's see how much power draw it will be. Now every time I go out long distance, I always do the max discovery uh, scanner. Uh, it, it, it pays off great in the end. It, it pays for itself pretty well. If you're going in distance, in distance throughout the bubble and out of the bubble, it, it'll really uh, pay some decent dividends. So let's go scanners. Let's take a look at this. If I want to go advanced discovery scanner. Okay. Okay. It's just a cost difference. Range increase, no additional power. So let's go ahead and go with that. Let's exchange. We're good there. Now I've got the planetary approach suite. That's great. One thing I want to do is always have the capability of getting down on the planet, so to speak. So let's go planetary vehicle hangar. That puts me over right there. Okay, we're going to have to do a little fudging here. So let's go uh, the well, we're going to keep it with the two H, and that keeps it safe for me. Okay, let's see. We're going to add this. Hopefully, we're good. Vehicle slot, and this is something that a lot of people forget: is to add the vehicle to the vehicle hanger. I was no different. So there's my scarab. There is no power increase because, of course, it's used on the planet, not on the ship. They don't um, factor any charging or any uh, comm link with that while it's on the ship. So let's go buying options, purchase 527 credits, piece of cake. I think we are set where we're ready to go. So let's get out of this. I've already done uh, the required naming of the ship. Let's look out here as, as you see fire group reminder. We'll take a look at that in a second. Currently, I have named my ship another female name, Halata Fajina. So, let's look over here with my fire groups real quick. Data link scanner. Hmm. And my chaff I always tie to uh, to a key, so I'm good to go there. Okay. Let's take this out for a spin. Okay, got the hollow me all set up there, ready to go. We are set. Take a quick look around inside the ship. There's the outside. There's a couple of quick view looking inside the ship with the new camera views. interesting design if you look at this it's a, a single pilot a lot of space to the left and the right and if you kind of look at this there's no other nav stations I've got a little graphical glitch here on the three o'clock position you see there you see the wavering that they've got to do little changes in that but um, interesting it's quite empty for a flight deck for a ship of this size okay let's go back to the launching Let's get this outside and first do a couple little checks on the boost sequence. Okay, unfortunately, you're going to see my ship, well, as soon as I take my hand a little bit off of the joystick, start to rotate, most likely to the right. Unfortunately, I've been trying to buy the new HOTAS controller, but because of my uh, 
current living location, I am actually deployed overseas in the Middle East, nobody will mail it to me. So uh, I'm a little stuck with the broken joystick I have. So please bear with me there. There goes a boost to 375. Nice boost speed there. Let's do it one more time. Let's let it recharge. Just about almost to 400. Okay. Drop it down to turn. And let's go do this quick roll loop. Not a bad little turning radius. And back to our tail. All right, let's take a quick jump to go see Felicity Farseer. And we will be right back when on approach. All right, just did a quick pit stop for a bit of fuel and to fix some control settings. I had enough fuel to make it to Felicity's place, but uh, really needed to do some setting adjustments there. So off we go. We've got four jumps to do. I like the sound of this. It's got some good background sounds. I heard a little squeaking in my headset. I think it was just part of the computer system. Hadn't heard in any other ship before, so I thought that was interesting. Let's get you through one jump here. As you probably noticed at the beginning, I did not install any type of a fuel scoop. Uh, one, that was uh, just because my distance was very limited right now. That is definitely something I would do uh, if I was traveling any further than, well, here it's been seven jumps. So, uh, you know, at about uh, 20, 22 light years per jump. So I would definitely, if you're doing long distance uh, shuttling of either cargo, passengers, whatnot, you got to get those uh, uh, a scoop there, or you're going to be stopping at stations uh, multiple times throughout the thing. Okay. All right. See you at Far City's place. All right. Here we go. Approaching Far City's place to upgrade the FSD. We're going to give it our luck a try and see what we can come up with here. Like a glove. All right, here we go. One. Number six. Okay, why am I not seeing number six? the itty bitty one All right not good at this with uh, no visibility down below let's see what we've got here ah there we go okay ah, first time landing on this small one here gear down 
gravity is pretty light, so it's easy to maneuver this ship, and it's working quite well. Very nice. Why do I still have some thrust going on here? Let's enter the hangar, shall we? Let's see what we've got next. Okay, for the FSD upgrade, we need data mine wake exceptions. I know I've got seven of those. Chemical manipulators, I've got seven. And arsenic, I've got eight. As usual, uh, factoring about needing to uh, spin the wheel as you'd say for about five times to get the maximum output or the best chance so let's give this a shot okay FSD okay we want increased FSD range number five okay as it says, I've got 8, 7, and 7, which should be pretty good for this, all right? So, okay, as we recall, we were sitting, I believe, at about 22 point something for the FSD as we tried to uh, create the ship, as we built up the ship leaving. So let's see what we're going to get out here now. So let's do our couple rolls and see what we do. Okay. Not bad. We can do a bit better with mass integrity. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna go again. Come on, no whammies. We can do this. Okay, three percent is pretty much identical to the very first one. Let's go one more time. Come on, let's get something good here. Let this one run manually the whole time. Come on, bring it up there. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Oh, not good. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Okay, optimize mass integrity. Come on. Good, reduce boot time, power draw, still 42%. What do we want to do here? I've got a couple other rolls to do. Let's do this one more time. I really want to optimize my mass up there. Okay, I've got pretty much two more rolls to do. Come on. Oh, you 
killing me. Come on, give me a jump. Yeah, that's worse. Even hard, longer boot time. Okay, last one. And again, none of these are really going to stay after the uh, the main game comes out after the beta beta is complete. But I really want to take a look at what is possible with this ship. Come on. I'll take that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, reduced power draw. Not bad. Well, I had power to spare. Increase boot time. Optimize mass just a little bit. There we go. We'll take that a little bit. And we will apply. Okay, I hope I like it as well. Let's get out of here. Let's get a little fuel to start with. Refuel this baby. Okay. So let's get back to here. See a little graphic graphics glitch happen there. Let's get back to my home, which is Wolf 406. Plot the route. Let's take a look at my jump here. Mm. Still sitting at 34. Okay. Could have done better. Could have done better. I was hoping for in the 50s. But I didn't have any more. I think, I, I, I'm pretty sure, a couple more rolls or just better luck, you'd be able to push your jump range probably up into the 50s. Get back to Wolf 406. I'm going to tweak a little bit with the equipment that's sitting in there, minus the FSD, and uh, see if we can uh, drop some weight and uh, put more into the uh, FSD there. Okay? But uh, that will work there. And uh, just so we check here, my jumps coming out to this location were seven jumps. It has now reduced it to four. So again, definitely got an increase in that, but I think we could have done uh, better with that. So let's go back. Oh, wrong key. Nice going. All right, everybody, we're headed out of uh, Felicity Farseer's place, heading back to Wolf 406, and we're going to take a quick look and see if we can increase the jump range just a little bit uh, back at the shop. So we'll see you in just a second. And here we are approaching Hamilton Gateway. Sorry for the shakiness of the joystick. As soon as I relieve the pressure, it wants to go into a uh, counterclockwise rotation. Got it. Speed's going down. There we go. 
landing pad one three. Definitely a lot easier to take through the mail slot here. You've got a lot more room to work with as opposed to the Orca and the Beluga. And there's one three. Outfitting. Okay, max 33.10. Okay, let's see if we can do this within reason. Um, power plant, I'm using pretty much all allocated. I've got just pretty much a quarter left. I'm not going to touch that. You know? Uh, Possibly a little thruster change. But in reality, I mean, it's going to drop my power there. But in a 5D, if all you've got is the capability of getting away fast for survival, because you don't have any defensive weapons, you don't want to mess with your thrusters. So frame ship drive can't touch that life support that's already pretty low that's not going to make much of a change because again we're talking about weight reduction um, no it's only making 0.8 difference is the most that I see here okay. sensors got a fuel tank capability you don't want to reduce that yeah and in reality if I got rid of hmm Okay, nothing's touchable there. If I got rid of, and which we're going to need to do for long distance, my either Discovery Channel, Discovery Channel, the, the Advanced Discovery Scanner, or the Planetary Vehicle, and swapped it out with a fuel scoop, we're going to see another reduction in the jump range. Let's take a quick look at that. Let's get rid of. Um, Hmm. Let's get rid of the uh, vehicle hanger. Sell everything there. Empty compartment. Let's go with boom. View scoop. Best one I can have is two alpha for there. Okay. Thirty-four seventy-four. Okay, actually that is not making any change. It's only changing in the in the power consumption levels. So I could go with a 2A, 2A scoop, get in infinite range, but um, again I sacrifice, uh, I've chosen to sacrifice the SRV, but it doesn't impact uh, my distance. So it looks like, uh, folks, we're going to be stuck at 37 excuse me 34.74 light years empty so per jump not bad but I think uh, it can be done better and it really all comes down to uh, how you roll the dice at Felicity Farce here so with that being said we're gonna end this video here I appreciate your watching uh, I do believe that the uh, dolphin here is a, is a pretty good ship small maneuverable um, I think it's something that uh, I'm going to look at uh, buying in the future. 
uh, again I didn't want to cover any prices here as you know they're gonna change once the game comes out full-fledged so again uh, hopefully this this was helpful to you uh, and if you have any questions as always shoot them down in the video thank you for watching you guys have a great day this has been the game kernel and I'm out